Hey everyone, today we're not only going to show you, but explain some really important audio preferences here in Studio One. Let's take a look. Now in this video, we're going to talk about setting up your audio interface. This is an extremely important step. You want to set your right sample rate for your fidelity of your recording, your right bit depth, and so on. Now, as you recall, we are using the Quantum 2 by Presonus for this example. And that comes with software to control the unit here. It's called Universal Control. Now, when I open up the Universal Control software, it's telling me that I'm using a Quantum 2 and all this information, and plus it's connected via Thunderbolt. Here you can choose the default sample rate for that unit. As I mentioned before, it's extremely high fidelity, up to 192 kilohertz and everywhere in between. And to choose one, just select it and there you go. Easy as that. And your clock source, now that's important too. This is going to be, if, uh, for example, if you're using multiple hardware audio interfaces, you want the timing of them, how the audio is sampled, the math to be synchronized. And we're going to choose, obviously internal means that the Quantum 2 would be the master. It's going to use its own internal clock. Just a little bit about universal control there for you. Now, if you're using a different audio interface, you're going to obviously have a different looking uh, software panel that controls your device, but it'll obviously have some of these very similar features. Now let's go to Studio One 4 here. Now, as you can see, under setup, it's saying built-in audio with a default sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz at 512 samples. We'll talk about this in a minute. Now to change this, right below it says configure audio device. There's lots of ways to get to this, but from the main page, this is the easiest. And here we have the audio setup page under preferences. Now it's saying the device. We're going to select from the dropdown our Quantum 2 and as easy as that, we are now linked to the Quantum 2 and it is ready to use. But here are some really important settings you need to be aware of. When you're recording digital audio, depending on your processing power of your computer, there's sort of a latency that incurs when it's crunching numbers to create those samples and play it back for you. That's called latency. Studio One does something really remarkable. It's kind of helped solve that problem, not only by using a fast connection like Thunderbolt, as you can see down here, the input latency right now at these specifications is 11 milliseconds and the output at 12. It's pretty fast by today's standard, but we can do better. Now, it actually has two tabs for this, audio device and processing. This is where Studio One offers a really exceptional feature when it comes to monitoring the audio that you're listening to and the audio that you're recording in addition to those tracks. It's called a processing tab. When you're recording audio, you typically want to set a smaller device block size. Now watch as I change this to 16 samples. See how the input and output latency reduced? Now it's half a millisecond. All right, so what this is going to do, the audio device sample rate here, the device block size, is when you're recording, you're going to hear yourself, hear your instrument back in real time or near real time. And that's what you want because you want to be able to hear what you're doing without having any delay between your performance and your monitoring. Now this number is going to be different for everybody. What you want to do is choose something that's comfortable for your system and spe uh, specifically. Like let's say 64 samples in this example. I'm running at 1.6 milliseconds. Not bad. Now here's what Studio One also offers. Under processing, dropout protection. This page here is going to allow you to set a different buffer size for the audio you're monitoring to. So the audio device here is what you're recording, the sound of what your performance, and processing is what you're playing back. Let's say this could be drums, bass, and guitars, and here could be your recording vocals. So what the processing does by having two buffers, it's going to allow you to get a very fast and near instantaneous monitoring while you're recording onto the system here. 
Now think about it. It's playing audio back and it's recording audio at the same time. That all has to be synchronized and happen as quickly as possible. So the one thing to remember is if your dropout protection is set to minimum, you know, nothing's going to happen. You, you want to increase this. Let's go to medium. And there you'll see a big jump. Now, under processing medium at 512 samples, we now have a low latency monitoring of only four milliseconds here. And we can enable low latency monitoring for instruments. So you could be actually playing a virtual instrument and singing at the same time, and it's going to give you this amazing speed. Now, as long as this number here is higher than this number here, the recording input sample, you'll have the ability to utilize native low latency monitoring. So this is called native low latency monitoring. And it's really important that you access this under preferences in your audio setup. It's going to be a little different, as I mentioned before, depending on your, your physical audio interface that you're using. But these variables are really important. You want to customize them so you can record with as little latency as possible and play back your audio with as little latency as possible. Let's bring this up to maximum. All right. So you want to find a balance between these. Medium seems to be pretty good. And this is going to allow you to work with your, or work within the parameters of your processing on your computer what you're playing back and what you're recording simultaneously, all right? So that's how we set up our audio device here under preferences. We choose it from the dropdown and notice if your audio interface has accessibility to a control panel, you can choose it right there. In our case, it would be the universal control, but it really wasn't necessary. It's not offering us too much because it's all being controlled here within the Studio One software and processing. Find a balance between these two. If you uh, have a latency while recording your vocal, then try reducing the samples, let's say to 32. This is important information. It's technical information, but this is where you want to start. Now, you've got the software, but timing the hardware to what you want to be recording is crucially important. And now you know. Hey, everyone, and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to download that cheat sheet in the description below.